Welcome back. In this short presentation I'm just going to go through some common uh, file formats that you can save your work in. Now here we have the image again of my favorite Riga Radio Robot. Now if we go through some of the more common file formats probably the, the most ubiquitous is the .pdf or it's an Adobe product, Ado it's portable document format. Now it is a very stable um, and almost universally readable document format. Um, it's good because you can um, balance the sort of resolution um, depending on whether you're going to be emailing it or whether you're going to be using it um, as a sort of a printing or presentation format. Now it's best um, format to use if you're going to bring your presentations outside to a bureau to print or something like that. Um, typically um, it's more stable, um, it'll give you more consistent print quality and pretty much what you see um, is what you get on the screen whereas sometimes if you go with um, a Photoshop file with lots of layers sometimes the bureaus can't read it, there's a lot of setup and so on. So if you're going externally .pdf is definitely the way to go. Now probably the next most ubiquitous um, file format is uh, JPEG format. Now again this is a pretty universal file format um, probably most um, compositing, um, image manipulation or um, publishing software will accept JPEG format images. Now the thing to, to bear in mind is that whilst JPEGs um, are quite compact file formats and you have a lot of control over the sort of compression of the file format, when you save a JPEG and it asks you the first time for the level of compression once you've saved it at that level of compression you're committed to that for the rest of the history of that um, file. Um, the reason for this is because um, it compresses at what's called a lossy compression. So you get very good compression rates but how it does that is that when it squeezes the file down it actually throws away a lot of the background information and once it's thrown away and saved at a sort of low compression you can't recover the information that has been lost. So if you don't want to have this problem of lossy compression then you should sort of think of another file format. Now you probably um, in architecture and um, also if you're take, you setting up an archive of images or drawings or so on you want to keep things that are more stable and probably higher resolution format. In this case the sort of TIFF or tag image file format is probably better. Now TIFF formats are high quality and high compatibility. They're openable by many sort of mainstream um, image applications. Now the thing with lossless compression, no information is lost but you end up getting quite large file sizes. So this can present problems if you're trying to share your information over the web or via email. Now a good compromise between sort of JPEG and TIFF formats is the dot is the ping format or portable network graphics. Now a lot of um, architectural competition sites which ask for information to be sent um, as part of the submission process via the web will often ask for things in dot uh, PNG format. It's got good quality good quality, high compatibility with a medium file size. It has lossless compression, so it doesn't have the same problem of compression as JPEG. It's used primarily for sort of web or screen based application, but also can be used for um, applications like Photoshop, InDesign, and so on. It's a good compromise between file size and quality, and even applications like PowerPoint will accept uh, .png formats, which is handy to know. It manages the um, file size rather well and if you decide to print out your PowerPoint it'll give you a reasonable quality. Now the native um, Photoshop file format is .psd. Now if you save your file as a .psd um, it can really only be open in um, Photoshop um, application 
but when it saves it, it saves all of the sort of background compositional elements, the layers, the effects, the selections, and so on. It um, ends up getting quite a large file size, and it has limited ca um, compatibility other than obviously through Photoshop itself. Now, you'll get to know um, how to save files, what file formats and that to use, but here's a few sort of rules of thumb um, as a start. Now, these are not um, rules set in stone, but sort of uh, a good guidance anyway. Now, if you're setting up images for a PowerPoint show, it's probably best to use .jpg or .png format, and don't go nuts with the um, overall resolution. The screen resolution on PowerPoint is only 72 dots per inch, but if you intend to print them out, a good compromise is around 150 dpi. Now, if you start getting much larger file sizes than 150 dpi, you'll find issues in PowerPoint in particular of the computer running out of memory and your PowerPoint show um, will run very slowly and sometimes it may crash. Now, if you're doing raw scans, it's probably best to save them at a fairly good resolution um, and also um, using a, a file format that's going to be stable. Now, typically what I do is I would save my raw scans and keep them in, in a file and then just manipulate or work on copies of that raw scan so I can, if, if I need to do a different thing with it or if I get to a point where I can't recover uh, the file, I can go back to the original and it'll be in a nice sort of um, high resolution format. So if you're saving a lot of raw scans, probably .tiff is the best format, but JPEG saved at a high resolution is probably okay as well. Now in Photoshop, really the main concern you'll have is um, the performance of your computer. Now if you're working with very large file formats, you'll find um, once you get many layers, many effects, if the file size is rather large, if the canvas is rather large, that the performance of Photoshop will diminish significantly and you find it very frustrating. Typically speaking, if we're aiming towards um, laser or, or bubble jet printouts, anything more than 150 or 300 dpi is probably a waste of time and it's a good compromise between performance and output. Same thing when you're importing Photoshop files. Once you've manipulated your images in Photoshop and you bring them into Illustrator or InDesign, it's probably best to save them as a .pdf or JPEG, again around that sort of 150 or to 300 dpi, before placing the file. Now finally, and, and this is probably more relevant to uh, students at the University of Queensland printing to the large format bubble jets. Now, the issue is, is that um, we print through uh, print servers and if you send extremely large files the print server will crash, um, it will take a long time to print and everyone else trying to print at the same time will get rather grumpy with you. So we'll go through this um, in the next section but just to sort of cap this conversation off I'd recommend sort of printing your final presentations as a .pdf um, at a 150 dpi resolution. With our bubble jets, anything more, you will not really see um, the difference in resolution um, on the machine and it will make sure that the print runs through um, the print server efficiently and without running out of memory. Now, when you're saving your um, P uh, Photoshop file, you can see here with this presentation I've got quite a, a number of layers off to the side. Now, if I save the file as a Photoshop format, it's just sort of gone through, saved it, and it'll save all these layer designations. Now, if I wanted to save a copy with just this layer visible, notice I've turned off all of these other layers. I can turn them on and off by clicking on the eye icon next to them. Now, if I save a copy of this, so if I go File, Save As, now I'm going to save this um, as a JPEG. So let me find where I'm going to put this. I'll put this in here. Now I'm going to select the JPEG format. Now you notice here, file must be saved as a copy with this selection. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to save. 
you can see in the JPEG options I get a slider and this is where I determine how much compression is going to um, subject the file to so much lower quality means I get quite a nice small file size you can see the file size that I get but it's going to throw away quite a bit of information along the way now if I go to maximum quality bigger file size but I'm not going to lose as much information so I'm going to go OK save that and if I open that up you'll see looks pretty much the same there's no layers there because it's compressed at all and it's just brought through the visible layers only so hopefully this gives you a good overview of the file formats and when it's best to use different formats and hopefully we'll see you in the next video after that we will have the second series of videos okay thank you